Hey everybody, welcome to Moment of Clarity. The mess that is going on in Iowa was not an accident. It was by design, and we can now see that. There is evidence showing that this was planned. And I'm going to go through a lot of the different ways we now know what's going on in Iowa. It, 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 it's fucking maddening. It is intentional chaos by the DNC, by the by the mainstream moderate candidates, the Buttigieg campaign, maybe the Biden campaign, and the former Hillary machine, the DNC, is all working together to try and undermine Bernie Sanders' campaign in a million different ways, but what they've done in Iowa is beyond the pale. It's fucking incredible. First of all, you have to realize that they knew that Bernie would do well in the Iowa caucuses. Traditionally, progressives do better in the caucuses where you have to stand up and be heard, where you have to show your enthusiasm for your candidate. So what did the DNC do after 2016? They got rid of half of all caucuses in the primaries, okay? So the first two caucuses are Iowa and Nevada, both of which are supposed to use this fucking app, this shadow app, okay? Because what did the DNC realize after 2016? They realized they couldn't stop, uh, they couldn't stop all of the caucuses, so so I got an idea. Let's take the caucuses, which are traditionally very public. You can watch them. You can see whether they, they are being counted correctly. Let's take them and funnel them through a shadowy app that no one can see whether it's accurate or not. And it's literally named Shadow. I mean, at least lie to us a little better. Fucking name it Fluffy Puppy Dogs. Don't name it fucking Shadow, you assholes. This Shadow app, which is now responsible for not being able to report the Iowa results, is at least partially funded by Judge's campaign. They've spent over $40,000 in payments to the umbrella organization that owns this app. And this is not just small blogs talking about this Shadow app. This is from NBC News. Two Democratic strategists told NBC that the app developer was Shadow Inc. A review of public records by NBC show payments this winter of over $50,000 by both the Iowa and Nevada Democratic parties to the developer. So they do mention those donations. They somehow fail to mention the Buttigieg campaign also donated over $40,000 to this app company. NBC continues, the company was funded by Acronym, a democratic political nonprofit, according to Acronym founder Tara McGowan. They don't mention she's a massive Buttigieg supporter. How do you leave that out? That it, it, it shows the corruption. It shows that this is rigged. It shows that, 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 that she is part and parcel with the Buttigieg campaign. The people that run the app that are supposed to give us the Iowa caucuses are connected to the Buttigieg campaign. Oh yeah, NBC News, they just, yeah, it slipped their mind. According to the New York Times, it at least partially was created by Robbie Mook, former campaign manager to Hillary Clinton. Robbie Mook has said that he did not have anything to do with the app, but who knows? It doesn't really matter because we do know Shadow's CEO, uh, their product manager, their CTO, and their COO, their chief operating officer, all worked on the Hillary for America campaign. So this app used in Iowa is a Buttigieg and Hillary machine creation. And it was designed to collapse, to crash. And we'll get into more of that in a second. So you say, well, just showing that Buttigieg's campaign donated to this uh, app's parent company, that doesn't really show that they're in bed with Buttigieg or in bed with the DNC machine in order to stop Bernie Sanders. Well, how about this? The CEO of the company that owns the app, Tara McGowan, was thrilled that Pete Buttigieg was running. In fact, when he just announced his exploratory committee, when no one knew who he was, no one had heard the name Pete Buttigieg, she tweeted out that she was so excited that Pete Buttigieg is running. You know why? Maybe it's because she's married to one of Pete Buttigieg's strategists. Furthermore, one of the 79 accounts that the Shadow Inc. follows is the dark money group that launched attack ads on Bernie last week. Democratic Majority for Israel. Now let's go through the play-by-play -play of how this plan to completely collapse the Iowa caucuses was perpetrated. First of all, if you know you're going to not be able to announce the results in Iowa, you have to not have very good polls in Iowa, right? Everyone would just point to the polls and say Bernie Sanders was crushing it. Well, what did they do? The Buttigieg campaign made sure that the main poll, the big poll right before the Iowa caucuses, 
did not come out. The Buttigieg campaign complained about the way the poll was done, and so the poll was not released. Next, you have to have the media not be able to give any results, which they succeeded in doing that by not really having any exit polls, not really having any numbers for our media to go on. So our media sat around with their thumbs up their ass going, we have no idea what's happening in Iowa. Next step, you declare victory, whether you've proven to have won or not. Pete Buttigieg literally declared himself victorious without any information coming from the Iowa Democratic Party. And in fact, here are Bernie's internal numbers from the Iowa caucuses. He got 28.6% of the delegates, Buttigieg got 25.7%, Warren 18.4%, and Biden 15%. So Buttigieg likely did not win, almost definitely did not win, but he declared victory because he's the Juan Guaido of America. Buttigieg is absolutely Juan Guaido. As you recall, in Venezuela, Juan Guaido, who 80% of the country had never heard of, declared himself president without actually running for president. The U.S. then declared him president, even though, as I might have mentioned, he didn't run for president. But as with Juan Guaido, most of America's like, what the fuck did you just say? Did you just declare victory in a race with no results, even though you were losing? And luckily, even Willie Geist on MSNBC saw the need to call this out. Tell me about your uh, decision last night to go out and claim victory. You went up on the stage and said we were victorious here tonight. What did you base that on? Well, we were looking at the internal numbers that we had and beginning to realize that something extraordinary had happened last night. I mean, here you have a campaign that was uh, really questioned when we first got in for uh, whether we even ought to be here, whether we belonged in this race. And to not only establish that, but to reach the position that we did uh, was a, a clear victory for this campaign. So not based, though, on anything you had heard from the state Democratic Party, for example? No, we don't have uh, anything from the party, at least I nothing. don't, that, uh, uh, that you wouldn't have heard as well. Uh, you know, we saw that. Oh my God, MSNBC just said something truthful. What the hell is going on? Buttigieg looks like a damn fool. Okay, and furthermore, he's military. We know that, right? He's very proud of the fact that he's military, but he's likely CIA as well. As John Kariaku, CIA whistleblower, has said that some of Buttigieg's flight schedules in the past, such as the fact that he flew to small African countries that are very difficult to get to for one day, seem to say he's some form of intelligence agent. Next step in this plan to destroy the Iowa caucuses so that Bernie Sanders cannot get the standard bump from said caucuses, well, you have the media, move on. They've got other stuff to talk about, right? In fact, I checked CNN this morning. This is hours after the Iowa results were supposed to come in, and it was filled with Nonsense. They had like one article on how the Iowa caucus hadn't, results hadn't come in, and then the rest are just nonsense news stories. They're like, move on. That was yesterday. Who even remembers Iowa? In fact, to quote NBC, although we're supposed to get results later today, the reporting and technological mess from the state party has resulted in a total wash. It's like Iowa never happened, especially with tonight's State of the Union address, tomorrow's final impeachment trial vote, and the campaigning in New Hampshire, or New Hampshire already taking place. There you go, folks. Don't even worry about Iowa. Don't worry that Bernie Sanders, with like zero positive media coverage, managed to win the Iowa caucuses going up against the entire DNC machine. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about the fact that Joe Biden is fully and completely collapsing. He doesn't have money. He doesn't have uh, people coming out to his events. He got 15% in a caucus he should have easily won. Don't worry about it. That was yesterday. Let's move on with our lives. By the way, this carefully created full-on chaos in Iowa serves another purpose too, a future purpose. The DNC desperately wants to get rid of caucuses because they support progressive candidates. So already today, Hours after the Iowa caucus happened, they're saying it's time to get rid of the Iowa caucus. They're already doing that. The mainstream media is running with that. Here's one headline. RIP the Iowa caucuses. This was carefully constructed and it serves many purposes. It undermines the Bernie campaign. It makes sure that Bernie cannot get the bump that he should have gotten from winning Iowa. It 
undermines the idea of the Iowa caucuses in order to get rid of these things where they can't be easily rigged. They can't, they don't go through black box machines. People have to stand up and be seen. You can see whether there's a million Bernie supporters standing over there and four fucking Biden supporters. You can see that with your eyes. This allows the candidates that would have been uh, uh, punched in the face from these caucuses, Amy Klobuchar, Biden, uh, maybe to some degree Elizabeth Warren, it allows them to stay in the race, to act like this never happened, we're all still going strong, and now let's get Bloomberg in there, let's get the billionaire who has bought his way into the fucking Democratic race. And keep in mind, this is not over. We're headed to other states for this primary process where they, 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 there's other ways of rigging it. There's black box machines, unaccountable computers. They are doing everything to rig this against the one progressive candidate, at least if you're talking within the Democratic Party, running as a Democratic candidate that actually is in the top tier, okay? The only one, they're doing it to rig it against him. And... People have to ask themselves, what are we going to do when the exact same thing happens this year that happened in 2016? We all saw it coming. We maybe didn't know that they were going to be as blatant as to create a fucking app called Shadow. Maybe we thought they might have a little uh, better sense than that. But here it is. We all knew it was coming. In California, they're going to force provisional ballots on anybody who's not a uh, steadfast Democratic Party voter. And that's going to be how they try and rig that one. Everybody needs to pay attention, wake up, fucking be ready. What is your next step as this happens? That's been your moment of clarity. Please share this if you think it's important knowledge. Uh, also, I am coming to Dallas and Austin, Texas, as well as Washington, D.C., and several other cities, Tucson, Flagstaff, redactedtorah.com. You can also vote for your city to be added. New York City, coming there as well. All right, click subscribe, click the bell button. Keep fighting.